Hey guys, welcome to the Leading Edge Cricket Podcast, a podcast with just as many episodes as England batting collapses. I'm Rob, this is Rich. Welcome hey, to Rob. the podcast. How are we doing, buddy? You all right? Yeah, good, mate. Good. We're um, we're all caught up. We're all shook up. And I don't Ooh. think any of us are actually surprised about what's gone on on the fifth day. No, no. But it, wasn't it great to actually have a fifth day <laughs> instead of like what happened in the first test? First test, as we know, when we spoke last time, was gearing up to be an incredible finish, wasn't it? England yep. were going to skittle out India. No question. I don't think anyone's argued that. <laughs> I don't think anyone have said that India would have hit those 157 runs with the nine wickets in hand on the fifth day at uh, Trent Bridge to win that test. England would have been one up. So wasn't it great? Obviously, I'm tongue in cheek here. Obviously, it probably would have been an India win, people, before anyone gets upset. Um, but yeah, it was so good to actually see the final day, um, you know, move towards a point where there was a, a real possibility of all three results for a while. <laughs> And then a couple of blokes to decided to have a little swing, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, completely changed. It changed the game. It changed the dynamics. It changed the momentum of the game. And unfortunately, Joe Root's come out and said, sorry, boys, this is on me. I, I've got this wrong. I, I got the tactics wrong. Um, it's my fault. Yeah. I think that's really good of him as a captain to do that. And it's always right to lead from the front from, you know, you, you take your successes, but you also have to accept your defeats, don't you? And uh, that's, that's good of him to do that. So it was disappointing. I mean, India, let's get, get around it first. England, India won by 151 runs, skittled England for just 120 in the fourth innings. Uh, just nine overs left in the day. That's the frustration, isn't it? So you know, close. Yeah, when you think about people gritting it out a little bit, you know, just to hang around if, if, if one or two batsmen or three or four batsmen just took another two or three overs each. Yeah, it's, it's a draw, isn't it? Whether it would have been a deserved draw, I don't know. India were, the I'd say, the better team in this test match. Yes. Um, but it, but it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough one to watch as an England fan, I think. We're going to get into all the bits and bobs, all the niggles, all the nicks, all the, uh, all the nonsense. Um, but, uh, but yeah... The key really, wasn't it, on that fourth day, fifth day, sorry, in the fourth innings, was that partnership we've just hinted about was between yes. um, Mohamed Shami and Jasper Bumra. Now, as we started the fourth, fifth day, let's just get into that first. It was the, the lead of 154. You're thinking if anyone's going to put a score on and get up to 298 and declare, then it's going to be Rishabh Pant, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. 100% it's going to be Rishabh Pant. Well, no, he was gone pretty early. 167 lead, three wickets remaining. You're into Sharma, Shami, Bummer, and Siraj. Well, Siraj didn't even have to take his pads to the crease. He would got pad rash, sat on the balcony. Sharma goes again in that first half hour. England are well on top. You're thinking England are going to be chasing less than 200. It's an England win, surely. Yep. And then we start tipping over into the early 200s, early 200s. Bummer comes in. It's a, it's a short ball barrage, isn't it? Mark Wood had a, a bit of an issue with his shoulder from the previous evening. Uh, he came in and bowled absolute gas. Obviously, he was struggling, but he was still bowling really well. Now, before we get too far into this, let's just quickly cover this area because this is where a lot of the the where the game changes, isn't it? Shami, yeah. a sensational 56 not out of 70 balls. Yeah. Incredible. Brought up his 50 with a six as well. Perfection, boy. Perfection. Yeah. And Bumrah, 30, 34 of 64 balls not out as well. So that meant that they did declare 298 for Does Bumrah become an all-rounder now? He's gone from no. averaging three to going top score, top <laughs> score. Is he on the all-rounder charts? No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, Shami batted well. Shami batted well. Bumrah was gutsy, yep. gritty, tough, stubborn, all those things. And he had a fair shout of luck as well, didn't he? Yep. You know, he, he was getting some edges. He, only, he found the rope three times. Uh, three boundaries on his way to his 34. It's this is what I, you know, it's all about different opinions now, isn't it? I thought when Bumra first came out, I thought England had every right to go after him. Yes. Now, I don't, you, we don't know here, here what's being said, and yeah. we don't know what was being said in the first test. We know when we spoke about we weren't particularly happy with the likes of Robinson dro leaving a shoulder on somebody, and obviously it was all bubbling over in the first test. Yeah. But in this, uh, you know, what happened with Bumra bowling short ball after short ball at, at England's number 11, Jimmy Anderson, I thought was ordinary at best. So England had every, every chance and every right to go after him. But how long do you want to do it for, boys? Like you yeah. said a minute ago, Rob, you've, you've, you've got the top six or seven out with good deliveries a lot of the time. Just bowl these guys out. The way yeah. to win the battle is just to tell them, wave as they're walking off the field. Yeah. And, and you can push them back. You can bowl the short ball to push them back yeah. as part of a plan. 
you yeah. can't just keep going to the well over and over again against yeah. nine and ten in in the order it's irresponsible cricket and irresponsible captaincy from the man that's set in the fields and asking his bowlers to go and execute on this plan and like we said mm. fair play to him coming out going you know what i got this wrong boys but mm. I'm, I'm going to put a different swing on this and we've, we've not mm-hmm. spoken about this offline is I think this is a stroke of genius from the Indian team. I, I really do. Mm. They, they like playing on the edge and they like yeah. playing with niggle and they mm-hmm. know that they need to do something to bait England to play the type of game plan that they want them to play. Because they yeah. know facing Jimmy Anderson in England or Stuart Broad, I know he's not playing in this mm. test, in England is an astronomical task. And it's why they've mm. failed so many times in England. Make mm. them do something different. Target Jimmy Anderson. I don't know if this is what they've mm. done, but if it is, it's a stroke of genius. Target Jimmy Anderson. You've got the England backs up. You're making them mm. play a different game to how they want to play based on emotion rather than just really consolidated intelligence on the pitch. And if that's the Indian plan, it's absolutely brilliant because it's, it's worked to a T and England's yeah. fallen for it. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at Jimmy Anderson's figures in the second innings after his five for in the first innings, none for 53. We don't often see, especially yeah. in the second innings of the game, Jimmy Anderson wicketless. Um, so that, that does tell you. And yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with you. It, this Indian team led by Kohli, Kohli seems to like a scrap. He, he likes to get into enough. a fight. Absolutely. And I've got no problem with that. Um, like I say, we don't know what's being said. There's, there's, this series is, is seriously at risk of boiling over. Yeah. And, and you know, someone's going to get into some proper bother, aren't they? We've spoke about Sir Isaac, We spoke about Robinson. Butler's always got something to say for himself. But every wicketkeeper in the world, just about, has got something to say for themselves. Correct. So there's always going to be that. Bowlers are always going to have a word. Yep. We've all done it. Everybody likes to have a little word at the batsman. If you if you're on top, you'll have a word. If you if you or you'll have a little grin or whatever. Yeah. And if you if they're coming after you, you're definitely going to have a word. So it is what it is. But it's like it does seem like it is playing into Indy's hands a little bit, doesn't it? England lost their heads a little bit. The counter attack came, and then England just had no response. And when you're two down, we won't. Oh, I'm not going to jump into the batting just yet. But when you're two down for for nothing then what are you going to do? In, India are on top. You, how many games of cricket have you played when you, you just need to make a good start? As soon yes. as you let the fielding team and the bowling team into, a, into a innings, they're away, aren't they? Yes. They're away, the noise is there, the tails are up, and you're up against it for the rest of the innings. It's all yeah. about that, that top of the order, and we've spoke about it time and time again. And if we can't produce a top order, the, the, the guys that are in there, if, if they can't even hang around, then I have no point. <laughs> to make of why why they should be there, but uh, but yeah, it was all about the Shami and Bumrah partnership, wasn't it? Like I say, they did declare. It made no sense to me whatsoever why they came out after lunch. They came no. out after lunch, hardly scored a run, took ten minutes while Mohammed Shami replaced his thigh pad, um, and then they lost another two overs um, for a change of innings. It made no sense. So England were set two hundred seventy two in sixty overs. If it had been two hundred seventy two ish in 64 overs i don't think england would have set themselves to go for it it's all irrelevant yeah but coley the genius in my opinion should have declared earlier i think there was enjoying shammy and bummer that much that he did he probably lost track a little bit do you think there's a, sent, do you think it's a say, psych, psychological edge to that let's take england back out there like it's almost just going to be yeah. a walk oh, down yeah. the road for it yeah and then go sorry openers you've had 10 minutes you yeah. need to now go put your pads on quickly and come out and back Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And this is the thing, I don't disagree with any of that. But if, if he wanted England, forget about how England battered, but if he wanted England to come out and go for it and set a score that they might actually go for, then it might well have been sensible to have declared 20 minutes before lunch. Yeah. yeah. And made them rush off the field and then have to survive 10, you know, 10 minutes or two or three overs before lunch. He, he probably preferred the set, like you've just said, he probably preferred the idea of, let's force those openers out again, get them back yeah. out to the crease again. Then they have to yeah. lash off. Then they have to paddle. Yeah. Don't disagree with any of it. But if England had batted out for a draw, a relatively comfortable draw, we would have been all saying, well, you know, what did they expect? This England team yeah. had no interest. They didn't have an interest in 75 overs chasing 273. They were never going to try and chase 272 and 60 overs. <laughs> but that's by the by. England didn't have a choice in the end, did they? Two wickets down very, very early. It was always going to be up against it. And it was always going to be India's favourites. But it took it nine overs. That's all it was left in the day. Nine overs, Rob. 
and nearly. I, I, I think you've got to look at one the quality of the Indian bowling was very yeah. very high the atmosphere it was very much one versus 11 on that pitch they were so loud so into the games it's so on top we've, yeah. we've been there in games of cricket where you're on mm. top and it just feels like every ball is going to be a wicket and it it yeah. did feel like that but yeah. you look at the start that the England openers gave yeah. the team to try and bat out on a fourth day in England with India on top is incredibly difficult let's make no mistake about that that is an incredibly difficult job they're trying to do yep however there are certain expectations about what you should be able to do. And Sibley and Burns once again found themselves not performing to the expectations. And this England opener issue is massive. And mm-hmm. the reason I say that is with, if we look at opening batsmen across Test Match cricket since the start of 2018 in the last three years, other than Bangladesh and West Indies, Zimbabwe and Ireland, England have the worst average of openers in the in Test cricket. And India average over 40. England are below 30, mm. only two above Bangladesh. There's a huge problem. But even if you go back to 2016, Rich, and we're going there, there was only averaging 35 years ago. So it's a, it's an ongoing yeah. issue. And yeah. you could turn around and say, oh, well, it's it's because we play half the games in England. Yeah, we do. But we average the same in England as we do overseas. We average 30 at home and mm. 29 away. India and New Zealand come over here. They average over 40 with their openers. Yeah, I keep hearing at the moment about when England selectors are looking at players. There is a, is it a low weighted average. They're actually looking at the, so that say Rory Burns and Sibley are averaging 30 ish. Yeah. They're using a weighted average or something. So, you know, oh, because a lot of the games are in England. So they're giving a little bit of credit. So it's so difficult in England that they're adding a bit on by the sounds of it. Yeah. It's not doing anyone any favours, that isn't. If you're averaging 30, you're averaging 30. Exactly. It, it, this is the point of an average. It averages out. So if you're playing overseas on a good batting deck or if you're playing in England, sometimes they are good decks. You might be batting in a period of play where the ball's not swinging. Do we factor every single seri- um, session in? Every single yep. half an hour in? No, yep. if you're averaging 30, you're averaging 30. It's just not averaging 30. Alistair, Alistair Cook, for what it's worth, since 2016, averaged 40 in the UK. Okay. okay. KL so, Rahul averages 43 from his two hmm. tours over here. Uh, Carlos Brathwaite <laughs> averages 38. When, when, hmm. We're just not we're not seeing that. Keaton Jennings averaged 17. There you go. There's your bottom bar, and then you've got a top <laughs> bar thrown in. Yeah. I mean, what started this collapse, though, off for England? I don't want to call it a, a an old-fashioned England collapse, but it had it had parts of an England collapse. But top yeah. of the order, Rory Burns, he's a big fan of the podcast. He was out leading edge, wasn't he, off Bumrah, uh, <laughs> into, <laughs> into the wait, waiting hands of the... Uh, the very quiet Mohamed Siraj. Oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't let him know he caught it at all. <laughs> yeah. Got to love a bit of Siraj. Just talking about him quickly. Eight for 126 in the game. Yeah. I mean, we, we spoke beforehand. Really, he only got three wickets in the first game. The way he carried himself, you'd have thought he'd have got 10 wickets in that first game. But <laughs> fair play to him. Great, great story. I, I didn't realise, you know, he, he comes from quite a... a, a, a don't modest poor background. Yeah. yeah, modest background. His dad's an auto rickshaw driver. We've all had a good bit of <laughs> good little drive around on rickshaw, haven't we? <laughs> um, we're big fans of him. But that's a great story to say where he's gone and then he's taken eight wickets yeah. in a Lord's Test match and takes yeah. the final wicket. Just quality. Mm. He, I thought, was a little niggly again, but I think he it was a little bit more, I don't know, it was he was a bit better behaved, let's put it that way. Than the it was, it was more controlled about yes. it, I, I felt. he. Yes, he's got his celebration that he does, but mm. I think the first time that he really went for that celebration, it was so at the batsman. Whereas now it's almost like you see Ronaldo score a goal and he does it. He does his Mm. celebration and and Mbappé scores a goal. He does his celebration. Mm. Well, Siraj does that. And every kid in India is going to be running around doing that, doing Mm. the Siraj celebration. So it felt like it's got a little bit of a different meaning to it rather than just being really aggressive towards a batsman. Yeah, definitely. It's a fine line still, though, isn't it? And this this series is, is... There's, it's a tinderbox, isn't it, at the moment? It, it could really boil over in the next test. So I'm sure the match referees, I'm sure the captains and officials will be trying to get their heads together or at least get the captains together of the teams and just just trying to start over a little bit, isn't it? It's a real niggle to the series and we're enjoying that, but it, it could really get into some 
you know, not where you want it to go in Test match cricket. It's, it's, uh, but, it's, it's interesting, mate, because it's got the feel of an Ashes to it. Yes. The, yeah. the intensity of the game has got the feel of the mm. Ashes. And if it was an Ashes Test match, I wouldn't be looking at it the same way with some of the... No. I'll, I'll be like, no, that's right. part and parcel of playing that top-level game. And right. I think India have earned and financially rewarded the ECB with a five-test five, yeah. five test match series. Yeah. Let's make no mistakes, they're here because it makes mm. money. And... Um, yeah, they are. They're a box office team, and it, yeah. it's a, it's big business. It's a really good shout actually, Rob, because they are playing it like an Ashes. Whereas England, I think, I don't think England realised what it was going to be like. I think they thought it was just going to be a summer Test series. They knew it was going to yeah. be tough, obviously, against the second best team in 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 Test match cricket. Just joking, guys. I'm just joking. <laughs> Oh, they, are num- they are number two. They are technically they, number they two. They are number like two. New and New Zealand beat them. So they're the second best team in the world and New Zealand's yeah. number one. <laughs> exactly. Argue with the Kiwi. <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to it. So Rory Burns, leading edge. He's out very early on. One for two. Yeah. Uh, one for one, sorry. Dom Sibley, he's caught behind. He walks. He's gone. The first time in home test match in an innings, as both England openers been out for a duck. Only the sixth time it's ever happened. Wow. If that's not a line to draw under this pair, then I don't know what is. <laughs> so that's uh, I, that's that's incredible. And Sibley's poor run continues. We've got to say this year, 2021, yeah. COVID mm. striking year, England played mm. 10 test matches. He's played in every single one. Mm. 20 innings, 356 runs, averaging 19. Yeah. Four ducks. This is this is a huge problem this year. Yeah. Rory Burns has had five scores of zero and Sibley four. See what I'm doing with my hand? Five and four. Mm. That's not good enough. Nine times your openers have been dismissed for zero out mm. of 10 test matches. That's, yeah. It's not good enough. It's not. The, the man that we were talking about that we would like to have seen opening in this test match ended up batting at three. Um, firstly, what's your thoughts on that, really? I, I, I have mine. <laughs> so Not, not good. On... No. Not good. I, I, yeah. You've, you've got a guy who had some success at test cricket before he got injured and then went off his way, has built himself back up as an opener. If you're an opener, you are used to an environment of walking out to the new ball and and all these little things that go on as an opener are exactly the same. And you put that person in the position that they have done well in and you're breathing them to succeed. If you turn around to her and go, are you coming in at number three, mate? Everything changes. I know he's still going out to bat and, you know, he can do that pretty damn well at times. But it's just not the same. It's, no. it's, it's just not the same. And it's, it's, it's not. just a really England move to make. And I'm going to yeah. say England politely because it's done. Yeah, it, it is. That was, that was my take on it as well. I'm glad you agree with that one. I mean, first innings, again, we will get caught up on what happened in the, in the, rest, in the earlier parts of this test match later, but... I thought first innings, I, as soon as I saw him out there, he was just getting to the crease and he was just going through his, his, his routine to get his set up. And I just looked at him and he looked like one of those guys that when they're walking to take a penalty in a big, in a important oh, part yeah. of the shootout, yeah. you just look at the eyes and go, oh no. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> and, and he went first ball, didn't move his feet, completely slow on it, cleaned up, game over you know, for, yeah. for that innings. Second innings, he came in, his feet, foot movement wasn't great, early on but it got better but his decision making was exceptional I thought he got himself off the mark I think it was a little nick uh, down through the slips uh, not a chance but it was just a little off the outside edge then he hit a nice one through um, through mid wicket area and he looked up and running but 45 balls for his nine didn't get a boundary but he looked assured he looked confident he was he was yeah. playing a good line uh, and then he got one. Sharma came on. And it was for this purpose, wasn't it? Sharma gets the ball to come back into the right handers and he, he got quite a big big in ducker going and it hit him yeah hit him quite high up and I was a little bit surprised that when he was given because the thought there might have been a bit of bat it's, it's angling yeah. towards leg Hawkeye showed it was clipping the top of leg stump and these umpires have been good but this is how fine the margins are it was one of those balls that obviously if it had been not out India appeal it it stays not out Yeah, and he carries on in his innings and we don't know where he ends up because he was just starting to get that confidence I thought yeah. just as a comparison Johnny Bairstow was given not out on a ball that was hitting probably three inches below the middle of uh, sorry, the top of middle stump. Yeah. He was then on review given out. Yeah. But if, they, if those initial decisions from the same umpire, I think it was Michael Goff, was, was reversed, Hamid continues. And Bairstow is still out because he was still out. So 
it, it's just, I think that's two poor decisions from the umpire there. And I don't want to be too critical because the umpires generally has, has been a, a, an exceptionally high standard of decision yeah. making. So, but it just shows you the fine margins. Yeah. I mean, nine or 45, but in my opinion, yes, well bowled Sharma, but he could have, he, you know, he could have gone on and battered. That's his bread and butter. He wanted to bat time and bat, yes. bat balls out, didn't he? He yeah. could have been the guy that battered for 150 balls. <clears throat> but yeah. Of a fine margin and an umpire's decision. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah, fine margins in the game, mate. It always is. I get my back up a little bit about umpire's call when it does the reviews. Um, yeah. Because it's either, if the umpire gives it out, well, it's it's out, it's umpire's call. Or if the umpire yeah. gives it, it's not out, it could be the exact same delivery and yeah. it's not out. And it's it's a really tricky line. And football struggled with it with VAR kind of going, mm. well, technology says it's this. But the sports that generally have the best flow to them are the ones that look if they can overturn um, clearly the mm. on-field call. So the on-field call has weight. It has weight at rugby. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know if it is something that needs fixing. But it, again, you're talking margins of cricket. It's mm. look of cricket as well. Whether you get the rub of the green because two yeah. balls exactly the same. One's out. One's not out. Yeah, absolutely. And someone said, didn't they, you could basically add a couple of inches on the stumps on yep. the top and the sides now. The, the, the stumps have grown. You, all, all it needs, with an umpire's call on the field saying out, all it needs is a millimetre of the, of the ball clipping a stump and the stump could have been that big, yep. <laughs> you know, another, another two inches or so. So it yep. is what it is. It was, it was disappointing for Hamid, but I agree. Number three, you're waiting. First innings, he's waiting for about an hour before he goes yeah. out. That's a lot of time to consider and think, especially after a, a long, you know, long absence from the game and all the things that happened to him after he burst onto the scene as a fresh-faced teenager. Um, he's now flowing locks, beard, the lot, isn't he? More fingers bandaged than uh, than anything as well. I don't know. He's not on the way to becoming a mummy, I think, the way he's, way he's, uh, he's wrapping those digits up. Bit, bit of a worry, to be fair. The fair um, so, Yeah, yeah, that could be his nickname. That could be. So, so yeah, Hamid went. And then Bairstow joined Root. So Root's there looking... I mean, whilst Hamid there as well, Root was just looking like he could just do whatever he wanted. He's wristy. Different he's game. Everything. Different he game. is absolutely playing a different game. You're right. And he looked good, didn't he? Bearstow lasted 24 balls. Didn't look as good as he did in the first innings and in the first test as well. Um, he got himself out. Sharma got him as well. I think it was just on the stroke of lunch, wasn't it? Um, that one, just before lunch. Yeah. So Butler was joining Root after lunch. And then just after lunch, Root goes for 30, 33 off 60. Um, and that's England down to 67 for five. There's no way back at that point, is there? <laughs> that's it's a simple back with this pain lineup. You you that's hope that. that you hope that, but England have done it before, and I think that's where hope is the thing that kills you sometimes. Because we've seen England get our holes. Panasar and Anderson at Cardiff that time um, were renowned for Leach. <laughs> at least as well. Um, were renowned for backs against the wall, close test match wins or saves and things like that. And yeah. that's the spirit of the England team. But um, I sometimes feel personnel that's on show has a little bit to do with that. And mm. Moe Nall is a great player. Josh Butler's a great player, great cricketers. Um, you'll get on to how they got out and the stick they got from Coley about it not being white ball cricket. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no matter how well Josh Butler did, but in his 96 balls, it's not bread and butler, bread and butter, <laughs> Joss Butler situation to be able to just keep going and going and going. He's he's done as well as he can and and better than I think a lot of uh, mm. fans of England would give him credit. Mm. But you're asking Moeen and Joss Butler to play different games, completely different games to what they've played and with no preparation of being in this environment other than trying to smack sixes, trying to win it, win a game. It's it's hard. Yeah. It's a hard position you put your players in. It is a tough one. I, I want to get onto Butler in a minute because it's it's we, we, there's a real direct comparison, isn't it, with Rishabh Pant? The way he's been given freedom uh, to express himself, to play how he wants. He's dancing down the track, second ball. No matter what's just happened behind him, he's doing what he wants. Uh, Butler is exactly what we you know. He's just always caught. He, he looks like he's slightly got one hand tied behind his back with how he wants to play. Yeah. Um, there's an argument maybe to free him up a little bit, but let's get on to him in a sec. So Moen Ali, he was the next man um, after that um, little collapse. 13, he got 27 in the first innings. I think he took three wickets in the game. Yeah, I thought ball, he had a ball pretty well. Wicket. Yeah, nice to see him back, I think. And I think I think England missed a trick by not including him in the first game, yeah. in the first test. And then Sam Curran, 
He's in the team. He's a good, he's a promising young bowler. Yeah, we that's spoke fair. about this. He's got something about him. He's got a niggle. He's got that something that we often talk about in a test match cricketer. Um, I don't know what he needs to do to become an absolute nail on test cricketer. He, in my opinion, there's two things. He needs to go away and do a Chris Wokes and add a, add five or six mile an hour on his bowling consistently. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the left arm angle. He's got all those other X factors that we're talking about. Or he needs to go and become a Ben Stokes esque batsman. I'm not saying Ben Stokes, yep. but have the ability to bat at six. And I, I think that's fair, himself, mate. Yeah, and just just to kind of get it out there, he got a, a king pair, which means first ball in the first innings he's gone, first ball in the second innings he's gone. Nice. That he, does not happen very often. Hamid was on a king pair. But he got himself off one, obviously. But yeah, unfortunate for Sam Curry in a tough test match for him. I think you've got to look again. I'm talking preparation and environment. The the guy's a white ball, not superstar, but regular around franchise cricket around the world. And that's become his bread and butter, mate. So four wickets at an average of 71 this year in test match cricket. And if you look at England bowlers across the last three years, you're talking Broad, Anderson, Stokes, Wokes, Archer, Wood, Robinson now. And Curran, mm. Curran's bowling average of 38 is by far the worst over the last three years mm. out of all those bowlers. England like him because he adds runs down the order. If he mm. doesn't add that yeah. to the team, what are you doing? I think they've tried yeah. to replace Ben Stokes by by going with the Curran selection and going yeah. with Moeen Ali. And you, I think you need to be either one or the other. With a batting and lineup this fragile, do you do you play a genuine batsman, mm. um, or do you go with Jack Leach? Who I still don't know how Jack Leach doesn't get a good rubber mm. the green in this England squad, mate. He's he's brilliant. Most wickets this year, twenty eight wickets at an average of thirty one, mate. It, it's batting. I think it's batting. England have got such an obsession with the batting and look i mean you just look at the england batting card at the minute there nobody <laughs> apart from root is where they should be yeah really i mean Bairstow, you could argue is at five but Bairstow is coming back into the team to try and reestablish himself that he don't he does not have a position of his own at the moment there is literally just root in that top 6 of uh, seven if you like with ali there so they're so obsessed about this batting lineup that they've just completely scrambled um in my opinion, and that's why they're constantly looking at which bowler can bat. Robinson has bowled really well in this series so far. Yeah. He offers a threat. He's another one. He probably just needs a couple of mile an hour on it, but he's, he's so uh, metronomical. He's so um, economical. Um, yeah. But there, he can bat. He's not shown it yet, but he can bat. I'm surprised Overton's not in as well, because he can bat as well. <laughs> but they're trying to paper <laughs> over these cracks, aren't they? And it's, it's not working. Curran... I really like him. I mean, he got the wicket of Kohli from an England yep. perspective, probably the moment of the test match, other than Joe Root obviously getting to 100. Um, he just, it was a brilliant moment, you know, sprinting off the little, um, well, I forget the England player he's modelled his hair after now. Phil Foden esque. Oh, it's a Phil Foden. Great <laughs> goal, wasn't it? Great moment, but it's a really tough test match for him. And that's only one wicket in the two test matches so far for him as well. So, yeah. A conversation needs to be had. Really like Sam Curran as a cricketer, but we need to understand what he's going to be in this England team. He, at the moment, he's just in there as a bit of... It's a bit like Don Best, no disrespect to him. But Boss, Best got in the team because he can bat and he's not a bad spinner. Yeah, Curran's in the team because he can bat and he's not a bad bowler and he offers a left arm. So, you know, that's not to under, underplay him. He's a talented cricketer in there and I think one for the future. Will, he will be a key player in all formats of England down the road. But at the moment... I just don't see yeah. what he's quite doing. But it must be said, we're without Broad, Joffrey Archer and Chris Wokes yeah. at the moment. If, the, if this England perfect. top six was half decent, mm -hmm. Sam Curran would be a great addition into this team because his batting, he would be able to play with more confidence. Yeah. Um, and if you had Stokes as the as a fourth seamer as well. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, not, he's not good enough in the role that he's he's in as a bowler. If you take him just as a bowler, yes, there are better bowlers. And for me, I would be playing Overton, who has apparently been one of the best bowlers in county cricket for the last two, three years, week yeah. in, week out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why Robinson's got to go. Robinson has yep. done it consistently over the last few years at county cricket. He's yep. got his opportunity. Overton has pretty much done the same. Um, so it will be interesting to see what, what changes, if any, they do make going into the, the third test. Um, Butler... And Robinson, it seems like they're the two that India have really decided to go and pick a fight with. 
Yeah. Uh, now, I'm sure an Indian cricket fan would say that it's Butler and Robinson that have decided to pick a fight with India. Doesn't matter. <laughs> They're the guys that India are targeting. Yeah. Um, Robinson, you know, there's a lot of chat from Kohli, wasn't it? I'm not going to go into it. Some of it was reported and it's like, okay, well done. Kohli's chatting to Robinson. None yeah. of it sounded particularly, you know, it's going to make the next edition of the Sledger's Handbook. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it did its job. Robinson, he lasted for an hour, 35 balls for, for his nine before Bumrah trapped him in front. Um, it didn't last long after that. Wood, Wood, Wood only faced a ball. He was not not out. He can say what a great job he could have done. He was on for 100, apparently. <laughs> um, but Butler went as a ninth wicket, 25, caught behind off Siraj. In this spell, Siraj took Ali, Curran, he was on a hat-trick. He then got himself uh, the wicket of Butler at ninth wicket, and then Jimmy Anderson went three balls later. Yeah. Um, to wrap it all up, 120 all out. Uh, Bumrah with the wicket of Robinson. And I know you was particularly impressed with that dismissal of Robinson. Rob. Yeah, yeah, absolute um, class, mate. Absolute class. R- round the wicket, slower ball. And he could play that 100 times in the nets and I still <laughs> think it would do him. Absolutely. <laughs> all ends up. It, it was yeah. up there. The best slow ball I've ever seen bowled was Steve Harmison to Michael Clark. I knew you were going over this. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark Nicholas's commentary. Steve Harmison with the slow ball, one of the great balls. And this, in terms of the <laughs> slow ball impact in Test cricket, is equally, maybe not equally, but it's as, as good a slow ball I've seen in the last five, six years in Test cricket easily. Yeah. No matter what started this nonsense with, between Bummer and England. Bummer has won the battle, hasn't he? He's got himself 34 not out in an absolute instrumental partnership of... Oof, what was the partnership now? I'm going to look at my notes. Uh, 89 for that ninth wicket between him and Shami. He then gets three for 33 in the second innings. Yeah. To go alongside his... Uh, where is he now? He, wicketless in the first innings, actually. But he's got 12 wickets in the series so far. Obviously, a good first test as well. But he's won the argument. He's won the battle. England, it's not a back-to-back. So we have got until next Wednesday... Yep. Uh, before the, the, the next test starts. So England have got time to go away and just settle things down a bit, clear some minds, clear some heads, and, and, and really consider what's going to win a test match. How Not just the selection of 11 players, but how are we going to play? What yeah. cricket, what brand of cricket are we going to play to beat this India team? We can yeah. see, like you've made the great point, of we've got drawn into an argument, we've got drawn into a battle, haven't we? Yep. Whether we started, whether they did it, it's irrelevant. But that's what India has done in the end, and that's what what's probably what's cost us. Yeah, you know, we've come. They've come out firing in that fourth innings. They were completely on top from the third innings, and they've just been all over. As simple as that. Yeah, um, much deserved win. Um, should we just get caught up on what else happened in the Test match? Because KL Rahul was the man of the match, and we've not even mentioned him yet. Yeah, what what a knock from that man! What yeah, an absolute I mean, knock. And what a start to the Test match. India, England win, the, win the, the toss and then put India in. And the 126 for one by the time Rohit Sharma, with a just incredible 83 off 145 deliveries, doesn't do injustice, that strike rate. 57 is still a good strike rate. But that was one of the top innings. It felt like he'd scored a big 100, yeah. just the way he was playing. Yeah. Um, Pajara failed. Rahani failed in that first innings. Um Rahul, though, 129. He was probably he was going at Sibley-esque, about 10 strike rate. <laughs> And then he just, but this is the point we've made about Sibley. Sibley doesn't, for me, ever seem like he's going to get ahead of that 20, 30 strike rate. Whereas Rahul went through the gears. When you broke down his innings mm. into, into balls or whatever you want to call it, I think it probably was we broke it down to balls. It just got quicker and quicker and quicker as his innings went on. And he ended up with a strike rate of 51. Um, and that was a man of the match knock. It's as simple as that. He just he kept going, kept going. Yeah. He obviously in the team as a replacement for Agawal as well. He, wasn't, he wouldn't have played the first test if it wasn't for injury. Um, and I just don't see now how they how they can drop him. I think Pajara could be the man, or would have been the man that yeah. was at risk along with Rahani. Uh, but they had a, a really good knock in the second innings. We'll get onto in a sec. So, anything else from that first innings from India? Obviously, forty-two for Kohli, thirty-seven for Pant, and Jadeja forty. No one else really struggled the scorers. Anything else in that India batting line from the first innings, Rob? Just Rahul's class, five hundred and twenty-six runs in England now, at an average of forty-three mm. with two centuries, mate. They're they're class numbers, and I think you've got to look at Rohit Sharma as one of the best openers in world cricket. He's got an incredible record in India, mm. and now he's coming over here, and there's him and Joe Root that looks like they're playing on a completely different wicket time in the ball. Yeah. Um, to anyone else and it is so nice to watch dealing in boundaries looking absolute class and, and shout out to Jimmy Anderson five for 62 I thought Jimmy was brilliant Ollie mm. Robinson was half decent he went in 2.21 economy rate he, he, it did feel to me like he was maybe a little bit looser than that but 
on the whole, he's he's got great control. And he always, to me, feels like he's got the potential to break a partnership, to pick up a wicket, because he's always nagging around that top of off stump, nipping mm-hmm. the ball both ways. It's it's quite hard to bat against, and it's coming from such a big height. And one of the things I really like is he's, he's never bowling from the same spot. He's always mm-hmm. varying where he is on the crease and where his release point is. Um, yep. Just a, a really talented bowler and you know just a, a good addition a really really good addition to this team yeah and he's he's come through at the right time hasn't he in a lot of ways obviously missing broad for the rest of this series that's a huge yeah. hole in that england batting the bowling lineup so it's good that robinson is stepping up and he's not just giving you wickets but he is giving you control uh with that economy rate as well and bowling long spells uh which is which is what you need as a captain isn't it sometimes mm. especially when other players you know Again, no disrespect to Sam Curran. He's gone at a 3, 3.27. Mark Wood went to 3.76. Obviously, he's in the team for a, a certain reason. So he will sometimes go for uh, for, for more runs per over than, uh, than you'd want him to. But that's just that's what's going to happen with quick bowlers occasionally. Um, it's a difficult one. Wood looks like he's struggling. He's got he obviously got that shoulder issue. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got a week off, haven't we? But it will be interesting to see the makeup of this bowling attack. Um they, they, they called up Saki Mahmood. You've got Overton in the squad. But the squad was only picked for the first two test matches. So I, I would assume they will then go go away and pick a test squad for the final three because I think they, they probably are back-to-back after this. They uh, are. They are. They go yeah. back-to-back. Final test on the 10th of September. Eee, crikey. I'll be scraping the ice off the windscreen in the morning for that one, Rob. That, um, that's, that's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> rough, eh? I, I think they'll make changes for that and we'll probably touch on that at the end. Yes. What, who we... Yeah think they'll bring in definitely so so just because there's players in the squad at the minute does not mean that that's going to be players yeah. that are going to play necessarily in that in that it's, third it's not so. safe you've not got that safe you can gamble you can change it <laughs> but it's not safe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's where we got up so in in the england's first innings okay so sibley's gone for 11 siro has got him um flicked one up didn't he I really like the, like the fields. No, exactly. And I really like the fields that Indy was setting. Coley had a couple of mid-wickets in and he had a very, very straight mid-on. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of those field positions where they basically stood on the on the cut strip, aren't they? Yeah. So Sibley's fell into that trap. Obviously, we spoke about Hamid, really unfortunate. Let's just talk about the Burns and Sibley first on this one. So Sibley, 11 off 44. Burns, 49 off, off 190, 136 deliveries. Yeah. Speak to me. Talk to me. What can we take from this for this first innings for England? Because we've obviously already spoke about both of them getting a duck. We've spoke yeah. about their poor records and the number of failures. Yeah. Burns scored 49. He looked okay. Yeah, he, d- he does look good, though. Burns has scored runs against Australia. He's got 100 against Australia. He's got 100 against New Zealand's world-class attack. He, he is quality. Mm. The problem is he's averaging 30. So he'll get yeah. a couple of tons he's only got one ton 150 this year five ducks thrown into the mixer from six test matches Mm. it's the inconsistencies and real low scores that's the problem when i saw burns was going i half expected him to go fairly big i'm talking like 70 plus here i'm not saying 200 but Mm -hmm. to me burns is an england opener he is an international opener regardless of his technique at the moment there's no one else Mm. that's going to come in and do better and Overall, he's averaging 33, 34, and mm. th- there's not much around that's averaging more than no. 33, 34. If we look at the teams, I'll correct that. Sri Lanka averaged 35, South Africa 36, New Zealand 36, uh, Australia 37, India 40. That's since 2016 over the last five years. So he's below average for the majority of, of mm. test nations. But he can play against Australia and I think he needs to go to Australia. And the fact there's no way in the world England are going to make wholesale changes. They're going to tinker. They don't yeah. like to make wholesale changes. They've already removed Crawley from the lineup. Yeah. Uh, they've removed Pope stroke Lawrence. It could be injury for Pope, but they, you know, Pope we thought might play in the second test, but he was, he was on the morning of the game. He was let go and get, went to play for, for Surrey in the, the, um, you know, Royal London. Yeah. That was a strange one for me, in my opinion. But because I did honestly think Hamid would be an opener and then you would need a number three somewhere. I think if you're looking at these two, we don't want to get too far down this path, but if you're looking at these, Sibley must be the man because they're only going to make one change, if assuming yes. they make a change at the opener. And if they don't make a change at the opener, they're, they're just increasing the pressure on both of those openers and on your number three and what comes behind that. You're putting pressure on Root as well as a captain. 
that he as a batsman sorry not just as a captain so you have to make a change at the top of the order yes there will be a different pressure that comes from that because it was somebody stepping into the side yeah but you would you would assume that Hamid yes he's not had the best test match anyone you know would have <laughs> wanted expected from from him but he's got to open it's got like you've brought him in you've given him one game the first innings I can almost write that one off yeah, first ball, like, he's just got one. He just yep. wasn't there, and and yep. I think a lot of the reason for that, and a lot of the fault lies with his his selection at number three. Yep. He obviously has to take responsibility because he wasn't obviously ready at that yes. moment. Yeah, but in the second innings, he showed me enough that he can be an opener, and I thought, yep. like I say, he was a bit unfortunate. So he he has to open. So you're probably looking at Sibley, aren't you? As the man Gotta go. really so, yeah. twenty two Test matches, mate. He averages twenty eight. We gave, Ke- go. we gave Keaton Jennings 17 test matches, the average 25. Mark Stoneman, 11 test matches, average 27. There's only one between Stoneman and Sibley. And for mm. what it's worth, I thought Stoneman was a much better opener than Dominic Sibley and constantly scored um, 20s, 30s. You think when mm. Michael Carberry was opening yeah. for England, he scored runs in Australia but got dropped afterwards yeah. for constantly mm. scoring 30s, averaging what 30. We- give <laughs> um yeah exactly i just don't sibyl is not there so her mead's 100 percent gotta come in yeah absolutely so so bearstow obviously after his 29 and 30 i think it was or 27 and 30 in the first test he got himself his uh, half century on his return 57 but the 23 54 strike rate again it's what we spoke about he's, he's a little bit in between his knee batted okay i think he batted better in this test match it looks like he's yes. had a bit of time in the nets with the red ball uh, i know at ali 27 the bowlers pretty much nothing as we spoke about with sam curran as well getting his uh, king uh, his golden duck and his king pair so before we get on to root what about anything from bearstow butler ali uh, bearstow looked good his first test yep. match he looked good he, he had periods yep. where he, he just he just he's so talented when he when he's in the problem is, as a test match cricketer, he averages 30-ish, maybe up to 35. I've not got the numbers straight in front of me. And that's just going to be Johnny Bairstow. He's not in uh, – he's 32 years old now, but he's not in all the test matches he's played, 76, he averages 33. He's not yep. ever at that point had a peak that makes you go, this guy's got the ability to go to the next level, score 20 centuries for England – or be a constant middle order batter averaging 40 mm. or blowing out a series and, and averaging 60. He's never he's never given me that. He's one of the most talented, best white ball players we've ever had. But as a test match cricketer, he's always just going to be, I don't want to use the term mediocre, but he's never going to be that next level up that allows him to be a world-class mi- middle of the order batter for me. But now's the time, though. This is where we're going to find out. This is his opportunity. He's been in, in and out of the test side. He's been in as a batsman. He's been in as a keeper. He's been in as an opener, as a number three. There's probably not a spot in this lineup he's not batted for England. Yeah. So now is the time. He is arguably one of the most talented batsmen we've we've produced in a number of years. Whether or not the, the actual success that's come with it is 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 consistent with what with that comment we just made. But he now has the opportunity to show that he is actually one of the best five batsmen at test level for England. Yeah. I think he'll get this opportunity. Whether he bats at three, whether he bats at five, I don't know. It'd be really interesting to see what happens at that number three position uh, and the opener. And that will dictate, I think, where and who bats between Root and uh, and Butler. Um, do, you, do you go with Bairstow at three? Just for, for the record, Bairstow I, since 2016 has batted at three 14 times for England, innings-wise, 400 runs at an average of 30. Yeah, I, I don't think it's right. But I think, as we touched on in the last pod, mate, Nasser is saying, saying he's a makeshift number three. Now, you either go bold and you go, right, I've identified certain players that I think can yep. not only play against India, but can also go to Australia. Yeah. A Dawid Milan, for example. I'm not yep. just saying him, but I'm just using his, him as an example. And then you say, right, we're going to lock him in at three. We've got Hamid's going to be back the rest of this series, opening with Burns. Yeah. Um, and Roots at four. Then I've got Bairstow at five. So you've locked in a five almost, haven't you? And then you've got Pope and Lawrence Crawley potentially on the on the outside looking in. It, it, so if you don't want to do that, then you move Bersto up, and then you use those players that you've had in the squad already, which is a Dan Lawrence or a, or an Ollie Pope. If you think one mm. of those um, is the way to go forward, so it's all about what they believe. And England tend to like to keep players from within the within the setup rather than bringing someone in from the outside. They do. So that's why I think they may go with someone like Bersto at three. I don't think it's the right yeah. decision. 
I think by the time we hit the uh, Gabba for the Ashes, Bearsaw will not be at three if he goes at three for the, for the third test. But yeah. that's something we can we can chat more about as we look forward to the next test. Yeah. Um, so Joe Root, 180. Incredible. We've already spoke about it. He's just playing a different game to everybody else. Yeah. Um, he's in such good form. He, uh, he obviously was scoring big in uh, Sri Lanka over the winter. Um India as well and then he's sort of tweaked his game a little bit hasn't he he's got back to how he needs to play in English conditions and he just looks like he has so much more time at the crease than anybody else when that ball's coming to me he's putting the ball where he wants I've not seen a player an English player for so long when he's playing a cut he's controlling where he's putting the ball with his hands when he's playing a pull shot he's controlling where he's putting the ball he's not just hitting the ball yeah. he's not doing what I do and it's a cut shot you just try and smack it as hard as you can <laughs> He's he's at guiding it through gaps. He's he's the ball's almost on a on a on a rope really for the, with the bat for him, isn't it? It's just yeah. he's just exceptional at the moment. It's it's the lateness in which he can see the ball and play the ball at the moment. And if you watch the two thousand five Ashes DVD, and you just mm. fast forward and you press play, I guarantee well, which Rob you watches a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, I guarantee you, you still see in Marcus Truscothic hammer the ball through cover off Brett Lee because that's all that happened for five Test matches. Whenever I press play on it, and all yeah. I'm seeing is every time I watch cricket mm. is Joe Root playing some of the most beautiful shots through mm. cover. And fair mm. play to India because they're keeping the slips in and they're trying to get him out. But he's playing a different game. Second youngest player ever to get to 9,000 runs, only 68 days behind Alistair Cook and ahead of Sachin Tendulkar. 22 test match centuries, only one behind KP now, so he's almost into second. Be a shame when he gets past KP. And seven centuries, this is incredible, seven centuries between the England-India series that have been played only Tendulkar, Cook and Dravid are on the same level. Root's just on a completely different level, mate. Second youngest player to get to 9,000 test match runs. Only 68 days behind Alistair Cook and ahead of Sachin Tendulkar. That's the sort of people that were putting him in at 30 years. 30 years he's only 30 years old. 22 no. tonnes. Only one behind KP. 11 behind uh, Alistair Cook. And seven tonnes in the England-India series all time level with Tendulkar, Dravid and Cook. That's the sort of company that he's keeping. And Rohit Sharma has had a fantastic year. Scored runs, nine test matches, 690 runs, average of 46. Second most runs in international cricket. Joe Root has scored 1,277 runs at 67 and five centuries. He is Mm. playing a different game to anyone else on planet Earth at the moment. Yeah, it, there's some ridiculous stat, isn't it? The, the, it's the biggest gap pretty much ever between the highest scorer in a test side yeah. in for England and the, the second highest scorer. Now, I, I should have done my research on this one, so I'm, apologies in advance, but I'm not sure if it's someone like Rory Burns is like the second highest scorer with 300-odd runs. He is. So Burns, I've got it straight in front of me, Burns 363 oh, thanks for runs. Thanks save. Um, 363 runs at an average of 30. Sibley in second, but note Sibley's Behind got the birds. same amount of innings as Root, played every test, batted twice Yikes. every test, average of 19. Lawrence, 354 runs, average of 27. Bairstow, 285, averaging 25. Butler, averaging 31. Pope, averaging 21. Stokes, 25. Ooh. Crawley, 11. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're saying is, if it wasn't for Joe Root, I don't know where this test side would have been. Yeah, they is, literally think, would not have batting. Yeah, I think last last podcast we spoke about Steve Smith's 2019 Ashes playing a different game to everyone else, scored 17,000 runs and the rest of Australia couldn't do anything, but they won the mm. series because of him. Joe Root is playing Steve Smith type cricket. Yeah, yeah, he's on a different planet at the moment, isn't he? And I think he's now up to second all time run scored in test match cricket isn't he for England he is he is just behind Cook behind, he's overtaken Gooch behind Sir Cook yes I, I don't think we quite appreciate what we've had recently when you look at the players that are, are now leading all times obviously it's Broad and Anderson yeah you've had Cook in recent years you know you look at the likes of Bell and Peterson yeah. obviously Root now as well It's it really has been a golden age hasn't it over the last 10 12 15 years yeah. considering how many dark dark days we had and nights staying up all night watching England getting destroyed wherever we were touring that winter um, so yeah there's a lot to be said I mean you can probably trace it back to the NASA Hussein Duncan Fletcher 
you can. days of yep. uh, winning in Karachi and all that sort of stuff. But uh, but yeah, it's, we really have been spoiled with some of the some of the players we've had, consistent players, and yep. it has papered over so many cracks when we have had these uh, these issues. I think with the opener, I don't want to go back into that conversation, but I saw somebody talking about Cook um, the other day on Twitter and just saying about how it almost seemed like England fans are, oh, this is, you know, you wanted him out. And I don't think anyone wanted Cook out, but it wasn't the fact that we haven't replaced Cook. We haven't replaced Strauss yet. <laughs> That's the problem. Cook came in with Strauss yeah. and we didn't ever replace Andrew Strauss. So it's bizarre to say that, especially when you see him walking around now. You know, it doesn't. It feels like an age that he played in, uh, Test cricket for England, but uh, but that's that's where we are. But uh, yeah, Joe Root just is is just simply exceptional. There's not enough superlatives for him at the moment. Long may it continue, um, and for the sake of English Test cricket, it has to continue, Joe. Yeah. Because if it doesn't, we're, we're going to be all out for about ninety in the next game. <laughs> um, so I don't. I think you know we, we've kind of covered off a lot of the Indian team at the moment. So we've you know we've got to bowling, but Siraj eight wickets in the game as we spoke about. Shami's bowled well again. Sharma took three wickets in this innings. I think he got himself is it five or six for the game. Yeah, uh, just having a very quick scan now. So yeah, he got himself six again. It, it's a, I'm sorry five for the game. It's an all round bowling attack, isn't it? Sharma's got that height. He's got the ability to put it both ways. He's one of the leading wicket takers in Indian Test match history. Yes. Bumri gives you that pace, that nous, that all those other words we spoke about when we spoke about his batting. He's just got something about him. That little grin as he's trundling in off the shortest run up a quick bowl has ever had. Shami is doing what Shami does in English conditions, and Siraj is bringing that little bit of fire and attitude and all the rest of it. It's a really well um, chiselled, sort of well. Um, balanced isn't it bowling attack mm. for India you've got Jadeja coming in with spin he's played well with the bat as well it wouldn't surprise me if we see Ashwin in the next game I think you've got to give him a game at some point you can't have him coming around and carrying uh, bottles of water can you but yeah. uh, but it's, it's as good a bowling attack as we've seen for a little while now and it's a surprise when you see someone like Siraj keep that place above one yeah. or two others hard um, hard to get a, your bowling spot in this lineup definitely and, uh, definitely you, you've got to say out of the test matches he's played, he's earned it. He's earned the right to be a part of that third test match. I feel like he's the sort of guy that Coley really likes because he yeah. is all, I uh, use the term, piss and vinegar, but he's he's <laughs> he's full of beans, mate, and he wants yeah. to win and he wants to do well. Um, 27 wickets, an average of 26 starts career, seven test matches. I think mm. that's a pretty good return to start with. It's not bad, not bad, mm. and it will go it'll strength to strength as well. If he just finds his way to settle in, he's made a name for himself now. People know who he is. People are keeping an eye out for him, obviously, because of the way he's he's he, he's behaving on a field. And I'm not yeah. saying that in a detrimental way, but he's he is setting himself up for who he is. Um, so he's going to get his detractors. He's going to get people that are going to target him because if he's going to go the way he is, then he's he's putting his head above the the parapet, isn't he? So you know, let's see what comes with him. It's going to be really interesting. I just hope that people like him and Robinson and others just take it back a few steps before we get into that third test. That's all I'm after. Don't mind the fire and all the rest of it, but it's just starting to cross a few lines, isn't it? With, with maybe one or two things on both sides. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. So let's just kind of close this circle off, Rob. We started, didn't we, on the start of fifth day uh, with Rishabh Pan and, and, um, and Sharma. India before that, Rahul... Obviously, man of the match, Rahul, with his, his fantastic innings in the first innings, he got a, a failure of five. Rohit Sharma, 21. So England were really in the game, uh, getting a couple of early wickets. Kohli gone for 20. We spoke about that Curran moment, didn't we? That was a one wicket yeah. for Curry in the game. Pajara and Rahane, the two men that you you have to say, well, Pajara especially, there's not many more chances coming for him. Nah. Um, he's moving on in years now, isn't he? And there's players coming up. Uh, in this Indian setup. So Bajara had to do that. 45 off 206 deliveries in 280 minutes. And Rahani, 61 of 146 deliveries in 238 minutes. For, you know, we, we give praise rightly to um, Sharma, sorry, Shami and Bumra for what they did. But this foundation of uh, Bajara and Rahani really, really set up this uh, this score for England. If, if Bajara had gone cheaply again, if Rahani had got him son of 20, 30 quickly, England are through this lineup, and yeah. I don't think we then see Shami and Bumrah do what they did. So it's that foundation that allowed those boys later on to really take it from 180 lead to the to, to basically nearly 300 lead. Uh, so was. massive credit to both of those. Rahani, he's, he, I don't think he would have lost his place just yet anyway, but I think Pajora is, is looking over his shoulder. This might be just enough. But there's always a chance that if they want to make a little tweak somewhere, that he might be the man that misses out. Yeah, and he, he is. <sighs> 
he is cracking on without being overly old. He's he's 33 years old, mate. 88 test matches, 18 centuries, an average of 45. Only averages 26 in England from 12 yeah. test matches. And I find that hard to believe for a player that's mm. done so many stints in county cricket. He mm. just, he hasn't got it going. Whereas Rahani, on the other hand, 33 years old as well, 76 test matches, 12 centuries, average of 40, comes into the UK, averaging 24. So this mm. is two of their backs to the wall players mm. in a difficult situation coming up big when the team need it. And this is yeah. the time. This is the time where India really believe they're actually going to win cricket in England. And, and they are. They could be 2-0 up if it wasn't for the weather. They are playing the better cricket. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. England will win in that game. No problem. Jimmy on the fifth day. <laughs> yeah, right. And just like that, Virgin Media has cut Rich off and cut off the podcast today. But we are about an hour of the way through. We've covered the test match. We're all ready to go. We've got three test matches coming back to back to back. It's going to be absolutely huge. Can India finally go and win in the UK? And can England find a way to stop this Indian juggernaut rolling straight through them? They've got questions around the top order. We spoke about what we would like to do. Bring Hamid up to open. He's an opener. Bat him in the slot that he's... he's not born and bred for, but there's a mentality that comes with an opener. He's got that. Let him go into that environment and shine. We need to find a number three. Do you look at a David Milan? Do you look at a James Vince? Do you look at Tom Abel, who's been going under the radar in county cricket, scoring runs time and time again? Or do you go with the Johnny Bairstow, bring him up and bring Ollie Pope in down the order? It's, it's very tricky for England because the three test matches out from a a very difficult Ashes series without English support down under, which is going to be incredibly hard in Australia, currently plummeted deep and dark into many, many lockdowns at the moment. And especially if Stokes doesn't come back into that lineup, how how do you just make that work? I'm not quite sure I know the answer. I know Hamid at two for now, and I want to see someone else coming in at three. I think James Vince may get the nod for me. Did well down in Australia a few years back. Sort of character that could do well there again. Get him back into this environment. Because England, they've put their chips down and they've gone Burns, uh, Sibley and Crawley. One, two, three. And invested time and it, it's just gone wrong at the wrong time for them. So big gaps to go. If you've enjoyed this podcast, guys, make sure you subscribe. It does help us with the algorithms. Check us out on YouTube. You can subscribe to us there and follow us on Twitter. There's always some good cricket banter going on. But thank you so much for listening, guys. If you're watching on any of the platform, comment and let us know what you think is going to be the prediction for the third test. We'll be back with a preview just before the start and when England release what their team is going to be. You've been legends. Till next time.